I think that there is pride around I work hard and I drink hard. We work hard all day and we drink around the bonfire and we pay the piper for stuff that happens and we go on. I worked with a lot of alcoholics and, and drug addicts. I realized that all of those jobs were not, I was not going to be able to do them and, and sustain my own recovery. Day 29, the day after you get out of treatment, the, the thinking is, okay, I'm better. And I go back to my community and I go back to the same routines and the same people. It's a recipe for failure, but it doesn't have to be that way. There was a group in 2001 of uh, local recovery warriors. They saw a need in the community for a safe place that wasn't necessarily an AA clubhouse or a Narcotics Anonymous clubhouse, a, a place where anybody that was in recovery in the community could come and find support. It was really a, a new idea in the state. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of that going on. They put together a 501c3 nonprofit and they started Friends of Recovery Delaware at Sego. I came here in very early recovery uh, to AA meetings. This is where I found support. When the opportunity came up to take some education, I did it. And then when a job became available, I was offered the job. In the midst of addiction, it's, uh, my experience was that it was impossible to make an honest human connection with anybody. So when there's a place like this where you can come and find support and you can find other people that are in early recovery and find other people that are in long-term sustained recovery, you know, there's an opportunity to see that um, healthy behavior being modeled. We try to put people from all different, all different parts of the community, all different socioeconomic backgrounds together and, and um, give people a venue where they can recognize that we're all, we're all human. But we have a lot more in common than we do different. We might see grandma first or mom first. She'll land in my office and say, I don't know what to do with my son. And we really offer linkages to detox services, clinical treatment services. What we do here is all non-clinical. So we, we look at things from a person-centered perspective and we try to find out what does this person's recovery ideal look like to them. We're resource brokers. Our job is to really know what's in the community and, and to link people up. If it's food, we are sandwiched between two food pantries. So we might take somebody by the hand and walk downstairs and introduce them. We try not to stay in that disease place. We try to look at, you know, the bigger picture. We have in the neighborhood of 1,200 visitors a month. So we do all kinds of wellness classes. We do uh, yoga, tai chi, uh, meditation, AA, NA, adult children of alcoholics, an adulting 101 program. So it's how to pay your bills. If we see a gap, we try to create a program that's gonna fill the gap. There's more that needs to be done. There's a need for detox beds. There's a need for in inpatient treatment beds. There's a need for um, reduced stigma around medication-assisted treatment. This model of community-based recovery supports, it's proving to be incredibly useful for people. Day 29 is really day one, and if somebody can get connected to the community, the odds of success go way, way up. My dream is that substance use disorder will be treated just like, just like diabetes. It'll be treated just like heart disease. All the data shows us that um, substance use disorder is, is just that. It's, it's a medical disorder, it's a, it's a brain disorder, and recovery is possible, um, recovery happens. Our mission is to put a face on recovery. Nobody wakes up in the morning and, and decides that they want to be an addict. Nobody wakes up and decides they want to be an alcoholic. This stuff happens over time and recovery happens over time. We don't go to treatment, come out, and we're fixed. There's a lot of work to do, yeah.